Looks like it's your time. Got a right, right, right. Hey guys, Cooper Spyrock here. Welcome back to Cooper Theorizes. Now, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, right now I will not be able to do any more zone fire theories, but I've recovered from my sickness. Today's focus, however, Baldi's basics in education and learning. That's me! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna drop the act right there. Now, I know it seems a bit early to do this theory, but someone already beat me to it despite the fact that the game was already released like a few days ago. But I really did my research on this, both biblically, more on that in a moment, and theoretically. Now, the Angry Box channel, go ahead and subscribe down below into the description, already came up with a theory that Baldi is a robot. But the thing is, Angry Box, your theory's good and all, but there's just not enough evidence. What I can prove, however, is that Baldi is not a robot, but he is a demon worshipper. Now if it's been a minute since you played the game itself, at first glance it seems like an educational game like Sonic Schoolhouse, right? <laughs> well guess again, because as soon as you get to the second notebook, this happens. Problem 3 Plus Times Equals. For a game called Basics in Learning and Education, this is impossible. Worst of all, there's no way to answer it right. If you answer it wrong, well, let the games begin. From there, you must maneuver your way through the school, get past bullies, a jump rope girl, and some other characters such as an annoying principal to get all seven notebooks and make a run for it. Y'all cut up? Good. Now for the theory. Now upon investigation, I had to use the book known as the Holy King James Bible. And what I found relating to the game was astounding. Listen to this. Straight out of Joshua chapter 9 verse 10, quote, And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon king of Heshbon, and to Og, oh, king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Now we're going to hold it right there because that name, Ashtaroth, is not only going to be important city name-wise, but name name-wise. Skipping to 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 10, we read, quote, And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Baalim and Ashtaroth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies and we will serve thee. Name in there sound familiar to you? Well, it should. Because if we pull up a few articles, we read that quote, According to Sebastian Michaelis, he is a demon of the first hierarchy of evil who seduces men by means of laziness, self-doubt, and rationalized philosophies, such as mathematics. His adversary is Saint Bartholomew, who can protect against him for he has resisted Atheroth's temptations. To others, demonologists in this case, and demon worshippers, he teaches mathematical scientists and handicrafts. Now we're gonna stop there. Because you know who just so happens to be the math teacher and seemingly the only actual teacher in the game? You guessed it, Baldi. Now wait just a second there guys, no need to twist my words, I never said mathematics was bad. In fact, it's essential for everyday life. However, Back during the very early days of the New Testament, right after Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit and got kicked out and after Cain killed Abel, the Nephilim started crawling about and teaching stuff like this when they weren't supposed to. And I never said Baldi himself was that evil either. In fact, he's generally nice at the beginning. But wait until the face change. It's not that he's evil on his own. He's possessed. In fact, there's a lot of evidence to suggest this. From the face change to his yell by the end of the game. Let's take a listen to what happens after you collect all seven notebooks. Listen very closely to the voice shift. Congratulations! You found all seven no, notebooks! Now all you need to do is. Now all you need to do is. 
Now I know all of you are speculating in the comments, but I know a demon possession when I hear and or see one. And that is indeed the process of a possession. In an article describing the signs of demonic possession, a major sign includes an odd and out of character behavior, such as a non-smoker suddenly having a craving for a cigarette, speaking in a different language, or even talking louder than usual. But that still begs the question of who are the other characters? Like Playtime, the bully, the principal of the thing, and the sock puppet. Well, what if I told you that that principal is not the actual principal of that school? If that were the real principal, he wouldn't put you in detention, especially when your life is in danger. You don't put your students in detention when you know a crazy teacher is chasing after them. That's because he does know. He's programmed to do that. What if I told you that he was the robot? Think about it. After all, mathematics is a step in learning how to program robots. And I know by now that you could tell that Baldi is a math master. It's even pointed out in the game through the impossible question. In fact, it seems only Baldi can answer it. But if that's the case, then where's the real principal? In fact, what does he look like? Well, the answer actually lies in one of the death screens. If you get caught by Baldi enough times, this screen will appear. That could be our principal. Despite what others say, it's not the player. He looks too... middle-aged. Not even young enough. In fact, it already establishes that you, the player, are a schoolboy, about either 8 or 10, just doing a favor for a friend at the end of the school year. And that even boosts our theory up. It also yields another question. Why would a teacher be active at the end of the school year where they should be out by now? And there's an answer. He's collecting. And spoiler alert, he's not collecting any grades or anything anymore. He's collecting a sacrifice. A sacrifice? For who? Well, based on what we already know, you could probably guess it's to get rid of Astaroth. You see, for those of you who don't know, people like demonic worshippers use the pentagram not only to summon a demon, but to get rid of him. However, the second phase is much more difficult for them than the first. In other words, it's harder for them to get rid of it than to summon it. For true believers in Christ, all we have to do is say the Art Father and demand that demon leave that person's body and never come back, and even leave a person's home. For the other, however, it's more difficult. Their process of exorcism is as follows. Within the pentagram star, five items must be placed on each end. And how many items can we see in the total amount of death screens? Exactly five. After Baldi catches you in the game, you see one of the following five death screens. A picture of scissors, a fidget spinner, a glasses case, a telescope, and a music box. There's another in-game death screen that involves an audio tape but we're going to ignore that, because that turns out to actually be Baldi's weakness. But now at this point, we're both thinking... Well, now with the five items on the pentagram, and the principal as the sacrifice, mentioned earlier, you could just send him away with that, right? What if Astaroth had other plans? What if he targeted you, the player, to channel in and possess you instead? Demons aren't one to play fair, after all. And for a math teacher being possessed by a math demon, he has some strength as he managed to blurt out the warning to you, the player, to Which would make more sense, right? And it does. Boom! There you have it, Baldi is nothing more than a puppet to a demon by the end of the school year. HA! Beat you to it, Matt Pat! But wait, Cooper, you forgot to cover the others, like Playtime, and the Sock Puppet, and the Bully. Well, we're gonna go into that next time. I know, I know, we just figured out Baldi and we still have the rest to figure out. But I still need to do some more research before I do. And also, shout out to the Angry Box channel for helping me out in a way. Go ahead and subscribe to him. He deserves them! And we'll also discover the hidden message next week. Or so. Also, a huge applause to Tokuner and more for finding those death screen images from the game itself. I'm sure he probably had a heart attack by now. So go subscribe down below. 
And hey, that's just another episode of Cooper Theorizes. Thank you guys so much for watching. And please, pray for the protection of a loved one. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as well, God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching. This is Cooper Sparrow signing off. Bye guys! Action! <laughs>